We thank you most sincerely for finding time to join us on today's episode of Tax Matters. My name is Ulumo Iwa Matuluko. The 14th Annual Tax Conference, the annual gathering of tax administrators and practitioners put together by the CITN, took place in Abuja last week. Tax Matters was fully on ground at the 14th Annual Tax Conference and we will be serving you blow-by-blow accounts of what transpired at the 14th Annual Tax Conference in subsequent episodes of the program. Today, we are going to be discussing self-assessment, self-assessment for personal income tax and complex income tax filers, as well as for value-added tax and petroleum profit tax. For personal income tax, the due date for filing, the deadline, is the 31st of March of every year. That is to say, by the 31st of March, you should have filed and you should have started paying on a monthly basis, pay as you earn deductions from your employees' salaries. And if you are paying under direct assessment, if you are self-employed or you are in a partnership, by the 31st of March, you should have filed and paid your tax for the year. Which means that by now, this is May, if you have not done so, you are already in breach of the law. For complex income tax, the due date for filing is six months after the financial year end of the company. You know that the company's income tax allows a company to fix its accounting year. It could be September to August. It could be April to March. It could be January to December, as long as it is 12 months. The choice is really that of the company. For convenience, however, most companies use January to December, which means that their due date for filing is June 30. What the Federal Inland Revenue Service experience is there for is a situation where most companies file returns in June. That is when more work is done and more revenue comes into government coffers. So we have been sent to you. If your accounting year is January to December, then your self-assessment for 2011 is due by the end of June. Are you ready? You have barely seven to eight weeks to file. What we are going to be doing today is to share with you what the Federal Inland Revenue Service has been doing to sensitize the public on self-assessment to enthrone full implementation of self-assessment and voluntary compliance. And what we'll be doing will revolve around two events on the same matter, on self-assessment. The first one being the sensitization program put together by the first tax and Alaba Integrated Tax Offices of the FRS for traders operating under the aegis of Balogun Business Association at the International Trade Fair Complex in Lagos, while the second one is also an enlightenment program, this time organized by the Light Taxpayers Office Non-Oil Ikeja, which was held on Wednesday, the 4th of April 2012, the very next day after that of Festac and Alaba, which underscores the importance attached to public education and enlightenment by the Federal Inland Revenue Service. We begin at the Balogun Business Association event. The Regional Coordinator, Federal Inland Revenue Service, Lagos Mainland Region, Mr. Ezra Suberu, welcome businessmen and women in this way. We are very happy because of the working relationship between the FRS and taxpayers. There are different taxes that are collectible by the FRS. Now, the failure by companies to comply with these laws guiding these taxes most often attract penalties, which, if left for too long, accumulates into huge arrears and debts outstanding against the company. One other problem we have also is where companies engage unqualified tax representatives, that is to handle their tax matters with the tax office, not only with the Federal Inland Revenue Service, but with state internal revenue services. The tax controller First Tax Integrated Tax Office presented a paper in which he looked at the history of self-assessment, the benefits, the how, and the when of self-assessment. The law expects that if you, after determination of what you think should be your tax liability in a particular period, the law vests the power on you to compute and submit to FRS, but not without payment to the designated bank. 
But where you don't have any payment, it's still obligatory of you to render your returns by yourself to the tax office without payment. But you still have to complete what is known as self-assessment notice form. What are the various taxes payable under the self-assessment regime? You have what we call the common income tax, which is payable by the corporate bodies. Those of us that are individual traders that are here are not supposed to pay common income tax. But you pay your own income tax to the relevant state authority. Education tax is also applicable to corporate bodies. Personal income tax is applicable to all of us that are sitting here. Whether you are a corporate, you are individual, you are a partner, or you are a non-government organization. In as much as you earn a taxable income, it is expected of you to file your returns with the relevant tax authority within 90 days from the commencement of the assessment period. Like this year, for example, 2012, all of us here ought to have filed our PAYE on or before 31st March 2012. And I want to say that if I should ask, I know a lot of us have not done that. It's only when the need arises for tax certificate, I want to go to embassy, I want to transact business with government that you start running around to ask for tax plan certificate. And that is not the beauty of the uh, self-assessment regime. He's saying, pay the tax as at when due. So that when the need for you to collect one thing or the other with, from the government, it will be easier. You must give us at least two weeks to get your tax plan certificate. So in the situation where somebody is coming forward and saying he needs tax plans tomorrow, what kind of magic do you expect me to perform? Even if no payment is required. Because you still have to meet some certain procedures. You have to register your company. You have to render returns and do some other things. Then the value added tax. There is no exception. I'm not saying the law does not exempt certain products. But as this market is concerned, and I know the activities that goes on in this organization, I don't want to preempt that there's anybody, or even if there is, only with a few that trades on exempt items. So if you don't trade on exempt items, by law, you are required to file your VAT on a monthly basis. And for company's income tax, if your accounting date is December 2011, by law, you are supposed to have filed your returns later by June 2012. I know that a lot of us are not aware about the provisions of the law. And that is why we have come forward to meet you at your domain to explain all these procedures and processes. So that ignorance of the law will no longer be there. Once you don't comply with the provision of the law, whatever the law has stipulated as penalty and interest will be binding. What are the benefits deriving from filing self assessment? One of them is that the taxpayers bears the burden of calculating and pays his tax liabilities. Nobody imposes any fines on you as to helping you to file. On your own, if you are filing your VAT, you just calculate what is the VAT on the sales you have made. What is the VAT on the, uh, on the cost, maybe the purchases you made, provided you have the relevant document to support it. Then what the law is saying is that just the dot, whatever that is the value added there is what you pay your tax on. Nobody is saying you pay your VAT on sales alone. And the reason why we emphasize VAT on sales is because that's what the law has said. It's not saying VAT on gross profit. Because a lot of uh, that's where I will come to me and say, oh God, what? It should be on gross profit. Then the question will be, where is the evidence of the VAT on purchases you have incurred? If you continue to, um, to purchase from maybe a, a, a company that doesn't issue tax invoice, then you are bound to forfeit the VAT on the input. Since the taxpayer assesses himself or herself, mutual suspicion and antagonism between the taxpayer and tax administrator is avoided. It ensures timely furnishing of information by the taxpayers. Self-assessment filers are exempted from payment of professional tax. They are also granted instrumental payment of taxes on application provided they comply. They are coming their tax return with first instrument. If you have a tax liability, let's say on income tax, for example, for this current year of assessment of two million, and you discover that your cash flow will not be able to sustain that. What the law is saying that since your account year ends in December, and the law has given you six extra months to file till June the following year, the law is now saying you can start paying this your tax instrumentally 
between the period of that January and June. Rather than waiting till the end of June, where you now say, Oga, uh, I don't have the cash to pay. And you, this day you now start asking for instrumental payment. The law will not, the law does not accept that. So I just wanted to take this advantage back home that if after computing your tax and you know that you have heavy tax to pay, make use of these six extra months to adjust your payment of tax. It is allowable. But don't wait the end of that six months and start asking us for instrumental payment. It won't be granted. There was a very exciting question and answer session after the paper presentation and we'll be sharing with you all that very soon. But in the meantime, this sampler. One of the questions said, um, when you don't make income, so where do you pay tax from? All we are asking is that um, you make returns. Let us know your activity for that year. You know, you haven't sold anything. Tell us you have not sold anything. Find a return. We, in the tax law, we have what is called the minimum tax. For the first four years, you say you don't make income, you are selling, you are not making profit. Yes, government should give you free. You won't pay anything. But you, you must tell us that, oh, I've been selling for the past 12 months. Uh, I sold for 1 million. And I spent 1.2 million, you know, in that selling of 1 million I made. Comment will leave you and say, okay, we have paid you. The second year, you haven't made profit, we will hear you. The third year, you haven't made profit, we will hear you. But by the fourth year, you come again and say you have not made profit. There's something minimum tax. There are other parameters in that your returns, you know, in that information you give us that we use to assess you. And then we talked about, um, I don't, I don't collect VAT, so I don't pay VAT. Uh, you know, this is our, um, this is our work. <laughs> we do it with law. We have laws guiding us. For FIRS, we have different laws. We have the company income tax law. We have the personal income tax law. We have the value added tax law. The value added tax law. There is a section that says that uh, you must register for VAT. You have no choice about that. So you register. In fact, this VAT, let me back up a little. This VAT, you are not the one paying it. You are just a collecting agent to the federal government. So it is compulsory you are a collecting agent. That's what the government says. You won't say, I don't collect. You have no choice. You need to collect. It is an offense. There's a penalty for not collecting. There's a penalty if you we come around, we check your invoice, and you do not state back then. There's a penalty for it. So, you see, if we are going for the, for the law, it is an offense not to collect. But we are still in the learning stage. So, I pray your indulgence that uh, you use this opportunity to learn more. That you need to collect back. <laughs> Hi, Oga, we thank God. Now, from Federal Inland Revenue Service. Oga, what happened? Madam, I think we see your received booklet when it takes your market. Receive booklet? Yes, madam. Madam, now, where you they write your VAT? Oga, VAT, they the amount we they for the receipt. Madam, it they very wrong to write VAT inclusive. Oga, now, how do they write down? The right thing to do is say you go write the amount for the VAT. We be say we will fix them separately. This one, we don't talk about the two and like that. My business people, them. Make una make sure say una write the amount of money where una customer pay for goods for una receipt. Make una also write the money for VAT for receipt separately. Federal Inland Revenue Service say it they wrong to write VAT inclusive for una receipt. If una not do as we talk so, court fit ask una to pay half the money the people buy goods from una to government. Or you go go jail or even self. The two join together. This message now from Federal Inland Revenue Service. Madam, let me to look at this my documentation. Shall be complete and 
Mm. Madam, it's your tax clearance certificate. Nice. But they say it is fake. A fake, Ike. She be no see by giving money to help me to collect and the Madam, thing. you no need to pay shishi to collect your tax clearance certificate. Hey, but you talk, say, the money go help the thing to come out quick, quick. To get your tax clearance certificate is easy. Get your company registration certificate, ensure you have paid your tax in the last three years, then fill an application form, and you get it in two weeks. Hey! In case you are in doubt, just go to any Federal Inland Revenue Service tax office and you will see the tax controller. No, we are not happy. That's see the thief. No go shopping my money again. Pay him also. FIRS. It pays to pay your tax. Welcome back. We are still on to Tax Matters and we move on straight to the second story. As the information train moved from the trade fair complex to Neka House in Alausa, Ikeja, where the Federal Inland Revenue Service Light Taxpayers Office Non Oil organized yet another enlightenment program on full implementation of self assessment. The Director, Light Tax Department, Oil and Gas, Mr. A.J. Bamidele, kicked off the session this way. Self assessment is nothing new to uh, most of us that are seated here. It's something that has been on for so many years. And when it started, then it was started, oh, companies with one million turnover. I wonder if any company, even companies selling pure water now, they are having one million turnover. Today, here we are. The regulation is gazetted, and it's gazetted uh, number 267, volume 98 which is now available at government press. This led immediately to the presentation by Mr. C. N. Oyegbule, the project leader of the self-assessment project. Before I go into discussion of the regulation, it would be good to know the important issues about self-assessment, as the chairman noted. A self-assessment regime is a, a task regime where you have shared roles and responsibilities. Um, before this time, it was all about the tax official making assessments. And if the tax official, official didn't make the assessment, um, the taxes were not paid. So you had to wait. There were a lot of issues which we understand, so I wouldn't bore you with that and self-assessment came on board since the taxpayer is in a better position to know his circumstances and since the taxpayer is a stakeholder like any of us i'm also a, sta a taxpayer and all that so the idea then was why don't you let the taxpayer compute his tax liability and pay and render returns to the service before the service starts its own part of the relationship that is ensuring accuracy and all that. One of the major products of uh, the preparation is the regulation which the chairman has mentioned. I may not go through all of it because here and there we would have to talk about other issues. But there are points to note. When we say self-assessment, it does not mean that if I, don't, if I can't do it myself, it doesn't mean that I, I cannot engage uh, tax agents or consultants to do on my behalf. But what happens is that the tax agent must be task compliant. So it's a lot of responsibility now. So if you, are the, if you are rendering on behalf of somebody, you should be seen to be task compliant. And, and that's part of the partnership arrangement where everybody is actually involved. The tax agent is quite strategic, very important, because having shared the responsibilities, the tax authority has the, the role to educate the taxpayer with the tax agent who is tax compliant already 
it's easier to spread the message. Therefore, the tax agent doesn't only represent the taxpayer, but also joins the revenue in spreading the message of uh, self-assessment, in assisting the taxpayer know how to uh, compute and know when to file and how to pay. So that's part of the shared responsibility. And that's why anybody who has to do that should be task compliant. Another major issue in self-assessment in the regulation is extension of time for filing returns. Um, if we go by the tenets of self-assessment, the taxpayer knows all his circumstances, especially for companies in tax where they have up to six months. He has set rules if anybody wanted an extension for payment. And the rules are there. Maybe the managing director was ill, all those kind of things, and uh, if there was a fire break and you'd have to produce those documents, then you get approval for extension of date for filing. But then you must have paid your taxes on due date because it's important. A whole year, you were sure of your circumstance. So these are some of the slight uh, changes there. And, but it doesn't extend to, um, uh, the extension doesn't extend to value added tax. So value added tax, the filing will be normal. Then instrumental payment was another issue that was not understood. Let's say, for example, companies in uh, petroleum production paying instrumentally, individuals also paying on payee monthly and for uh, limited liability companies paying six months later and asking for instrumental payment after due date. In the first instance, that's not equitable. For me as a taxpayer, uh, it's like a discrimination against me because I pay monthly and the companies do not pay monthly. They now want to pay after due date. Points to note indeed. And quite a holistic package if you ask me. I mean, task consultants have now been given the added duty of teaching and educating their clients just as they themselves are now expected to be fully task compliant. We'll be sharing with you the presentation of Mr. Oyebule on self-assessment in full detail in a subsequent episode of the program. And that's a promise. This is just an appetizer. And talking about tax education and enlightenment, the Federal Inland Revenue Service has been doing quite a lot in recent years. You remember the Students Advocate for Tax, SAT. Three clubs were formed in three secondary schools in Abuja. And after having made a success of that pilot scheme, the FRS went ahead to establish the Students Tax Advocacy Initiative with a board that has members from relevant stakeholders including ICANN and the CITN. Now it's been decided to go a step further. SAT clubs are now to be replicated in other schools across the country. And so between Friday the 4th and Saturday the 5th of May, the STAI, organized a capacity-building workshop for 19 non-governmental organizations, NGOs, who have now been charged with the responsibility of replicating SAT clubs in all parts of the country. We spoke to the CEO and some of the members, some of the representatives of the NGOs in attendance. That full story of the capacity-building and the agreement signing will come to you along with other youth-related episodes of tax matters in the last weeks of May. May 27 is Children's Day in Nigeria, and so as part of our own contribution towards commemorating Children's Day 2012, there will be about two, three episodes on activities by youths in tax advocacy. Those are episodes to watch out for. And indeed, the next episode of the program of Tax Matters is an episode to watch out for. It will be on the 14th Annual Tax Conference. Do have a great week ahead and thanks for watching.